Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Oh, hi, Irene. Oh, wait. What are you doing? Well, you see these things? What are they, you know? Well, they're little white plastic balls, but if I know you, that's not all they represent. They're probably molecules, atoms, or yes, that's beans, right. or something. Something. They're, they're not going to be what you think they are? Well, you're kind of right. And that, um, uh, if you put this uh, cover on like this and turn on this, um, uh, Gadget here, which controls the voltage. A little motor here goes around and watch. Well, they jump up, up, and I can't hear a word you're saying. What are you saying? What'd you, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> now more are going oh, up. Oh, I see. Well, with this uh, plastic ball molecules, we're going to explain, I think, such things as boiling and uh, how you can make chocolate-covered popcorn. Chocolate-covered popcorn? Yeah. Have you ever had chocolate-covered <laughs> popcorn? <laughs> chocolate-covered popcorn? I never heard of it. Well, it's kind of an old treat in our family, and so I thought I'd make some for you today and see if we can't explain how it's done over here with this. Okay. Uh, let's start out with a simple thing, like just plain boiling. Come on over here, because I have some water boiling, and you tell me, what is boiling? Okay. Here's a flask. See, which I have on a stand here, so it won't be knocked over. And Another there's tube. water boiling. And there's water boiling. Now, what's happening down here with that water? It's when the water changes to steam, and yeah. it reaches to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. When water gets to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it's, it's no longer water, is it? It's steam. It's steam. It's a gas. It's a gas. And that's what it's up here? Yes. This is uh, the vapor, the gas. the gas. And down here is water. And inside those water. little bubbles? Air, isn't it? No, no, no that's the steam. That's the steam. steam. And over here, see, there's a little, little wire. In the middle here is a little thermometer, a sensing device. And over here is a thermometer. See what the temperature says over here? 200 mm, around 10. OK. Now, we can adjust this to make sure that this thermometer reads 212 exactly. Yes? 212. Now, from now on, we can see whether the temperature gets above or below this by referring to the thermometer. Yes. OK. Now, let us see if we can, before we uh, play around with this boiling point, see how we can explain what's happening here with those molecules over there. I mean, those plastic balls. Let's try. Now, this may look like a, uh, an electric device, but it's a, it's a heating device. This is our, pretend is our source of, of heat. And okay. notice here what it says here. 190 degrees. Mm -hmm. And 212 and 230. Yeah. Those are going to be our degrees Fahrenheit. Now. Water mm -hmm. should boil at 212. Right, right. Here it is. No, no heat at all. Actually, what this is doing is controlling the amount uh, of electricity that goes over here to this motor. And you see oh. the motor has a little pulley on it. And as it uh -huh. goes around this way, yes. it vibrates this rod up and down. And this rod is connected to a piece of inner tube stretched across the oh. bottom of the tube. So oh, we and can, that's what makes we can jump, up? jump up and down. And the plastic balls in there get hit by this diaphragm, of course, and fly up here. Now, when we turn on the, the motor and just barely get it to move, not much heat. No, very little. Very little. More. Now well, we have a liquid. Have it. Oh, yes. Not boiling. No, like water. Now, I have said, let us put this collar around up here, and whenever a molecule of the liquid goes from here up over here and jumps over the rim and gets caught up here, let us say that it has escaped from the liquid. Like steam? Like steam. Like boiling. Yeah, it's changed. Now, in order to keep the balls from flying out, let's put one of these things on top like this. Now, what do you suppose those uh, wooden balls represent? Could it be the air pressure? Right. In other words, when you boil something around here, you have air on top that's of it. Right. So you have molecules on top of it. So that's what those balls represent. And they uh, go like that. OK, now let's turn on the heat. And you move that dial up slowly. Okay, now, when one or two get up there, I'm pretending, if one or two get up there, let's pretend that this is evaporation. Because that's what happens when water evaporates. Right. Fast molecules go flying off like this and don't mm -hmm. come back. 
But now when we get a substantial number of them up there... Simmering? Well, well, no, no, it was... Re See, water will evaporate even if it's not on the stove. If you just let it sit around here, it'll, that's uh, right. the fast molecules yeah. will go off. So let's pretend that that's what that is. But now when we really heat it up and we get a lot of those going off, then we'll consider it boiling. Oh. Okay? And simmering is in between there? And simmering is halfway in between, yes. Oh. All right? Go ahead. Get up to two o'clock. This is a fairly accurate representation of what happens because only the fast molecules get up here, don't they? That's right. The slower molecules stay down here. When the molecules get up enough speed, on the average that they're, uh, we could represent it by 212 degrees, that means they're fast enough to go flying off. Okay? And see. Now that's what boiling is. Right. Now let's go back and look at that flask over here because now let's see what happens when we begin to change the boiling point. Ooh, look here. at all the steam coming out. Yeah, here we have steam coming out over here. And it's boiling away. Now, let's do this. This means that we have um, uh, water boiling at 212 degrees. By the way, is that what the temperature is? Let's check it. I check it. Yes. Just 212? Now, I've taken it off, so it ought to begin to cool off a little bit. And I put some nuts in the bottom as a source of point source of heat so that it would heat up a little faster. If I put this thing over there, oh, I forgot. To, I wanted you to get uh, a couple of ice cubes. Would you go over to the refrigerator and bring them up, please? Okay. I'm uh, getting some other things right here. Uh, now, what's the temperature? 212. 212? 211 and a half. All right, this makes a tremendous difference. Water does not boil and gets to 212 degrees exactly. If it's a little below, it stops boiling. You know, it's funny, the way half a degree makes such a difference. Yes, it does. Now, I'm going to put the top on here. See, there's this tube here. Yes. And I'm going to put this little clamp on the top to, to, to prevent anything from getting in or out. You take one of these ice cubes here, and hold it along the side of the flask. Okay? And I'll take another one and hold it on the other side. You see what's happening? There's a little bubbling oh, on back there. Yes, over here. it looks as if it's boiling. Now. But I don't know. It's, it's, I'm cooling it off. We're both cooling it off. And it's not on the stove, and it's not 212 degrees. Why is it boiling? You know where it's boiling, too? It's boiling around where that end of that thermometer is stuck down in there. So oh, it's not coming. There's okay. some coming up from the bottom down here. Yes. You see it? Yes. Down over here? There's some water bubbles coming up from the little nuts I have on the bottom. Now, what's, what's your problem? Makes perfect sense to me. I don't know why you're confused. You what's the matter? I... As I said, I don't understand. We are cooling it off. It's not on the stove. It's not getting heat. We're cooling it off. It's not 212 degrees. Why is it boiling? Doesn't that seem strange? Well, now, here's a clue. Listen. I'm going to take that clamp that I put off. I'm going to take it off. I want you to listen what happened. Hear that one? The steam's coming out. Oh, you think it's steam coming out? Yeah. Okay, well, remember that. Just remember that. That's all I want I mean, to. that's simple. Because I'm going to give you another clue. You thought the water was boiling, therefore steam was coming out. Here is a pump, you know, like a bicycle pump, except it works differently than a bicycle pump does, because here, you hold on to the end of that tube. Oh, it's a vacuum. Yes, it's just the it's, opposite. It's sucking my... Yeah, it's the opposite rest. of a bicycle pump, and in fact, we take all the air out of the tire, wouldn't we? Okay. Yes. Now, if I take this little rubber tube off and put that end of that vacuum pump on top there, I'm now, when I pull up like this, I'm going to take some of the uh, air that's in, in there away, right? Yes. Now watch what happens to the water. It's it started to boil again. Yes. Isn't that a good clue? It, no. You're no? You're taking out the air, but I don't know why that, what's that got to do with the uh, with the ice? ice? And why is it boiling when you take the air out? I don't know. Well, it's a great clue. <laughs> it's a great clue. All right. Let us now see if we can use those little 
molecule models over here and explain this. Okay. Let's take the pump first. What did I say these were? Uh, normal pressure. Air, normal air right? pressure. See, there are air molecules in there. Now, what I did with the pump was to take some of them away. Yes. So I could use these That's in right. place, couldn't I? Yes. Instead of these, so these are they're fewer. Okay, if we put this over here. Now let me put the, fill my container full of water again. Oh, you got some left. See you left it there? Oh. There. Now let's turn the heat down and start a little lower and start boiling the, go ahead, now slowly turn it up. Tell me what happened. Quite a few coming up now, aren't there? It's boiling already. Isn't What's it? the temperature? 190. Why? How come you only have to add that much energy? I see. Now, let's go mm -hmm. back here. When these balls were in here, in other words, that many air molecules, yes. what happened was some of these molecules came up from down below and started to try to fly off into the oh, air. They hit them? They hit these balls, didn't they? And, and they went they, back down? Yes. Okay, so if we take some of them away? Oh! Now more will get up there because they won't hit. Right, they don't hit. We lower the pressure, take away some of the molecules. So you lower the, the temperature of boiling. Yeah, right, so it doesn't take as much heat energy to force the molecules to jump and change oh. the state. And so it boiled at 180, 180 degrees. 90. Yeah, 190 degrees. Yeah. Actually, it depends on how good the vacuum is, how low the, the temperature will go. Is this what they do up in mountains? What do you mean? Well, uh, they cook things, uh, things boil at lower temperatures. Yes, because there are a few air molecules up there. Therefore, water boils at a lower temperature. Mm -hmm. Therefore, an egg takes longer to cook. Because <laughs> it's, it's lower yeah. temperature. Okay, now let's go back and look at the, uh, at the pump over there and see, see if you can now figure out about that ice cube. You understand now yeah. what happens when we took the airway here. It bought at a lower temperature. And now, let me put this back on here. Because when, when this was sitting here on the stove, what was this space filled with? Steam. Yes. And what happens when you cool steam off? Oh, it condenses into water. And if again. this condenses back to water, what's left up here? Nothing. Oh, it, it, like a vacuum. Yes. Yeah. And if, well, a partial oh, vacuum, that, that's what happens just then? like the same pump, isn't it? Right, yeah, just like the pump. You're cooling off the steam inside, mm -hmm. and it's condensing into water, mm -hmm. and then... Fewer molecules up above. That's right, and then it boils. It boils at lower temperature. Yeah. So therefore, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, it I does told now. You it, I told you it was a clue, didn't I? Well, I didn't get it before. Okay. So now we have changed the boiling point, lowered it by taking some of the molecules away from the top. All right, let's get this, uh, well, let me check all my uh, things up here. I've got four mm -hmm. pots all cooking at once, and we're going to use them later. And I want to make sure, all right, I think we can take that one off. Now, we get the temperature, uh, what's the thermometer read, by the way? Mm, 211. See, it's not quite boiling. See? No, it's not boiling yet. Okay, now when we get that to boiling again, this time I'm going to put a different pump. So I'm getting rid of this vacuum pump that I had before. This time, this is a pump like the bicycle pumps. Here, you hold oh. it. It blows out? It blows out. Okay. So instead of blowing, uh, instead of taking air molecules away, when I put this on here this time, adding. I'm going to add them. Okay. Now let's wait till that's boiling. What's the temperature? Um, not quite 212 yet. Not quite 212. Well, I want to put this on until it's at least 212. It's just a fraction. Just a fraction? Well, it, now it's beginning to boil. Right? At least there's bubbling coming up. Yes. 212. 212. Now, if I can get this on without burning myself. Okay. Now, I'm going to put pressure. Oh, I think if we're going to put pressure on here. How do you look in glasses, by the way? Well, I wear them sometimes. Yeah. Well, these are here because I'm going to put pressure in this flask. And if you put pressure in the flask... Oh, you look great. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> if you put fresh pres pressure in the flask, it, it could blow the top off the off the flask, the cork, you know, and uh, hot water might come out. So it's a good idea oh. to have a safety glass on. Now, I'm going to put pressure on top. You watch what happens to the boiling. It stops boiling. It's sitting right on the stove, too. Now watch. And now it's boiling away. Yeah. Now, sure. let's try that again. This time, I'll put the top on, and you watch what happens to the temperature. If I can put it on without burning myself. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Okay, watch the temperature over there. 212. Staying at 212? Yes. But it's not boiling. It's not... I thought you said oh. water boiled at 212 degrees. It was. It was... Maybe this... Could it be the opposite of what we did before? That's right. It was the opposite of it. I'm, I'm keeping a very close eye on that tomorrow because I, I don't want the temperature to start building up. And it could. Is it, could. it still at 212? Yes. Has it moved? Oh, it went on. down a fraction. It went down? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just uh, look out. I don't want to. I don't want to put any more pressure on it because what what normally happens, and I don't want to put the pressure on because you can see why we were building up quite a bit of yes. the pressure there. Ordinarily, when the when the the uh, flask starts to boil like this, and you put pressure on the top, the uh, temperature starts going up. Because you're actually adding That's heat right. all the while, but it yes. still doesn't boil. No, it's the opposite of what we did no, before. No, 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 wait, wait, no, no, wait. Over here with the molecule. You can take your glasses off. Oh. All right. This time, this represented vacuum, didn't it? Yes. This represented normal, normal pressure. This time. Oh, that's uh, when we add more pressure? More pressure. More air molecules on top. Let's uh, put our water back in here again. <laughs> okay, let's start down here at the, at the uh, 190. And uh, go ahead. Now, that was the situation that we had over there, wasn't it? The water was at 212 degrees, not boiling. but it wasn't boiling. Not very many molecules were coming off. Now, the thing I was afraid to do, let's do here. Let's okay. build up the temperature and watch what happens. How come it's now boiling at 230 degrees? What was in the way? Oh, more pressure, yeah. right? More, more molecules. More molecules, right. yes. So it took more heat right. in order to push them up. Oh, I, I forgot something I was going to ask you. Back there when we were talking about vacuum, where we had the few molecules, you know? Yes. Like this? Yes. And we put these in there. Where would that be useful? Have you ever uh, have you ever made hot chocolate or, or, or hot cocoa with milk? Yes, you, you uh, put the milk into the pan and uh, you uh, you heat it, mm -hmm. and then you add sugar. Uh, do you heat it? Turn up the f uh, you know the heat as high as it'll go? No, you don't boil it because then it, it leaves some kind of a mess, a white. You burn the solids in the milk. On the side. Yeah, you burn it. Yes. Okay. Now, what if you had to, what if you had to uh, heat up milk? in order to kill the germs. And you had to do this with gallons and gallons of it. How do you keep oh, it from burning? Oh, uh, like pasteurization? Yeah. I guess lower the uh, pressure. Yeah, lower the pressure. So boil it in a vacuum. Yes. Now, how about the opposite of that, which is what we've got right here? Let's yeah. say that, um, uh, why do you uh, boil potatoes? You know, why do you cook potatoes in hot water? You, you just cook Well, you don't burn them, do you? No, you don't burn no. them. And if you boil it, if you, if you fry them or put them in an oven, it's possible you that you burn could burn them. them. So therefore, you surround them with heat at 212 degrees because it's boiling water. Well, let's say you want to speed it up. Put pressure on top of More it. More pressure. Wouldn't the water boil it at a higher temperature? Yes, it would. And then what would happen? Oh, could that be like the pressure cooker? That's right, that's the pressure cooker. And, oh. that, and therefore, it cooks it faster because its yeah. temperature is up 230, 40, or 50 degrees. Now, let's go back over here and look at our, my boiling situation because we can now get rid of this. We've now finished putting pressure and temperature, changing our pressure and temperature. You want to take a... That thing. Because now, you remember that um, strange popcorn? You want this? Yeah. All these things that I was looking at over here before, mm. 
Now, let's, let's get this one boiling. Uh, the only liquid that I have in this flask is water. And here is a thermometer. I can't use that other one that we had before. Here's a thermometer. You want, can you read what it says in there? I have to hold it for you just right so you can read it. Uh, uh, almost 220. Yeah. 220. 220 degrees. Now, you said water boiled at 212. Well. And it never got any hotter than that, did it? Because no. then it changed its heat. No. Unless you had pressure on it. Well, that's ordinary, regular, no normal pressure. pressure. Yeah, no pressure above here. Yet we have this now at 220-something. Now it's up, uh, what, 230. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah. Now, I want to add a secret ingredient to this. So uh, ho hold it just a minute. Can I look? Yeah, you can look. Okay. All right. I just wanted you to see that it was boiling down there before yeah. I added the secret ingredient. I'm sure you have no idea what that secret ingredient is. I don't know what Well, if I was is. told you I was going to make chocolate popcorn, what do you suspect? Fudge? No. Yeah, the chocolate. Yeah, the cocoa. Okay, now you... What's the temperature now? It's still... It's around 230, a okay. little less, maybe. Now, I'll, I'll take that off the uh, stove, because I don't want to have it cooking there without watching it, because I want you to, to uh, go over there with those molecules again, after I've stirred this up a little bit, and tell me why it is that you should be able to boil a liquid, water, at higher than 212 degrees. Let's get normal pressure back here again. There's normal pressure. Mm -hmm. And if well, this would now boil at 212 degrees, right? Yes. But now I added something. Not only a secret ingredient, but some other things which I didn't tell you about to that water. Oh. Here they are. Okay. Okay? Yes. Now go ahead, turn it on. 212 degrees. Let's just say that's, that's not boiling. It isn't enough. No. No. Why? Now things are up there. Why? In other words, when we had pressure, we added more of these balls, didn't we? Yes. By adding more of the balls, more molecules down here, it takes, it's harder for the oh. molecules oh, to get yes. up there. Okay, now what was the temperature that we had back there? 230, 230 or something? Okay, turn it up to 230. notice what's happening. Well, it's boiling. It's boiling, all right. And what about those molecules that I added down below? Are they oh, up there? Oh, no, it's only the water that's boiling. Mm. Whatever the other thing is, it's not boiling. It's not boiling, that's right. So this solution that I had down here with the mystery ingredients in it and that other thing is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, didn't you make fudge? I remember, in fact, you brought it over oh. here and I had some. Come on over, let's uh, see I if you like think about that, that fudge. Well, <laughs> as I remember, it was quite good. Your mother, okay. your mother kind of goofed it up by adding a little too much sugar. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Now, let's take a look at this again and make sure that it's boiling. And you tell me why this temperature can get way up to 230, 240 degrees. As a clue, look at the thermometer. Do you see what it says there alongside the temperature? Soft ball, hard ball, soft crack, and hard crack. Yes. Now, what do you suppose that means? When you made the fudge, what did you do? Did you use a thermometer like this? No. Well, uh, when I thought it was almost ready, mm -hmm. I took a little bit and put it into a glass of water, and it formed a ball. That meant it was there goes, yeah. When the, when the ball was uh, fairly firm, well, you yeah. knew then that it was uh, ready. ready. Well, now, look at those words again. What does it say? Soft ball and hard ball. Yes, that's exactly what the same oh. thing. Oh. Well, instead of actually dropping it in, all you do is look at the temperature. And what oh, you were, tell you. Right? What you were doing when you put that hard ball in was checking the temperature of the solution. Also, you were checking to make sure that it was thick enough. And that's thick enough now. Here's the popcorn. Oh. Popcorn. You were good at making fudge. Let's see how you are at making chocolate-covered popcorn. Here's a spoon. We'll take this and pour it over the popcorn and stir it up. Now, watch, ooh, this is very hot, so be careful. If you bring it up and, and get it on your finger, it's 230 degrees. Yeah. yeah it's pretty hot, pretty warm. Can I do it? Please. Right. Uh, as I said, my father used to make this all the time. It was one of his favorite confections on a 
you know, a cold winter night to sit around and have chocolate-colored popcorn. Gee. Now, the reason I wanted to make it here was I wanted to show you that when you cooled off that solution of 230 degrees, that it no longer was a solution. In fact, I don't know if you can see it. It isn't quite getting hard yet, but that's no longer liquid. It's not dripping off like water, is it? No, it's not dripping. What has happened to it? Oh, it's like uh, sticking. It's yeah. thickening. What happened to the fudge? Oh, it hardened right yes. away. So this is no longer water really at all, like but really well, like fudge. And this is crystallizing. It's turning into, into a, a sugar crystal. And pretty soon we'll have each one of those little uh, popcorn uh, uh, grains covered with a chocolate-flavored crystal of sugar. Now, while it's, uh, while it's uh, drying off so that it's good enough for us to eat, tell me, uh, how do we uh, change the... Uh, Boiling point of water? First of all, what is it? The boiling point yeah. is 212 Fahrenheit under normal pressures. Ah, now you're getting to be a scientist. Right. Now, uh, what happens when you change the pressure? Like, say, take away some of the air molecules on top? What happens to the boiling point? Well, then the, bo uh, the uh, boiling point is lower, like uh, two, 200 or Even 210. Even 210, yes. 210 right. or anything okay. like that. Okay, and where's that useful? Pasteurization. Mm -hmm. Okay, and other kinds of sterilization also. Now, how about when we add more molecules on the top? What happens? When you add more molecules, then the uh, boiling point is rises, mm -hmm. 230, 240, around there. In fact, it did even go greater than that. When you really increase the pressure, like in a steam turbine generator, you know, where they gener electri le generate electricity, the pressure can get up to many, many pounds per square inch. And the boiling point go way, way up, uh, four or 500 degrees. Yeah, so it can really, because they want that pressure in order to drive the turbine. Okay. And where do we use that kind of increase in pressure around the house? Well, potatoes, uh, pressure cookers. In the pressure cooker, that's right. And how else do we now change the uh, boiling point of uh, water? By adding things into it. Like what? Sugar. Like sugar, like this right here. I think it's just cool enough for you to, uh, to take a, uh, a bite, because I want you to try it. Uh, by the way, go ahead. There are, if you add some other materials to water, you could lower the boiling point. Alcohol. In fact, did you add vanilla to your uh, your fudge? No. Matter. Suddenly the light went on there. What was that? But it's pretty good. I told you it was good. My family's enjoyed it for years. <laughs> if you put vinegar, or uh, vinegar, <laughs> if you put uh, alcohol in it, you would make it uh, boil at a lower temperature. And of course, it's all based on the fact that um, heat is the motion of molecules, right? And that's why this these particular little plastic balls made such good molecules because they illustrated how you raise and lower the boiling point. Watch Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.